so pretty they really are gorgeous now i'm not suggesting you get married and walk down the aisle carrying onions but they are nice things to do they look so pretty and normally i don't care whether you use a white onion or a brown onion or a red one but sometimes if you really want the right flavor and the right texture nothing like a red onion they're a problem because they're not so easy to peel as as other onions the skin is more fragile but you know you work at it and uh, well you you just work at it and so what i want to do today i'm going to make a whole bunch of things with red onions and i'm going to uh, start off with a red onion tart now look at the colors of that and that's just great i cut that across there and it's ready to go all right now first thing we'll do we'll crank up the fry pan and get a little bit of heat going in there we get an onion a couple of onions like this we'll say two red onions and we'll cut them into wedges now, the way to do this is to make sure always make sure something's got a firm flat base and then you can cut right cut it like that and then we just cut it into wedges like that and you'll know when you've got enough because it'll look too big to go in the fry pan right so there we are we'll just put that in there like that fry pan is sort of half warm now and you don't before you put stuff in you get the pan before you put the oil or the butter in but you make sure when you're putting butter in that the pan isn't too hot because the butter will burn and if it burns then it tastes awful and you're not going to enjoy it so we're going to put these wedges of onion right into the pan even before the butter is melted okay just put them in there and they will separate out for themselves you want some pepper let's crank out some pepper you know the weird thing about pepper mills is that we use pepper mills like nobody's business on this show and every time because people send me pepper mills and i just like to play with them all everybody wants to know where you get it i don't know because there's about 200 people in the world who seem to be intent on doing nothing but sending me pepper mills which is great so there onion and we get the flavor coming out of this now and we get some basil and when you get basil fresh this is fresh if you haven't got fresh you have to use dry but just cut it don't chop it because it turns into mush just cut it like that and as soon as you can smell the onions this is a great supper dish it's a quick 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 supper dish and it's really great basil basil i don't want you want to call it a bit of salt over the top get the flavor of it now pastry you can make your own or you can go to the freezer and grab yourself a pre-frozen thing take it out frozen the way it comes out of there frozen all right put it out there. get a bowl grab yourself some cheese and here we go about a cup of cheese now those see what you're doing is cooking while something else is happening you don't have to keep fussing and messing with those onions because you can hear them and you'll smell them and you'll know when they're sort of ready to go so there we are we have about a cup of this grated cheese when you grate swiss cheese make sure you grate the holes because they're an essential part of the flavor if you don't get the holes in there it doesn't taste the same and uh, they sell in Switzerland pre-flavored holes, but they're not as good as the ones that just come with the cheese. All right, a bit of cheese, a couple of eggs. In go the eggs in the bowl. Now, this is a sort of quiche, but it's different. It tastes better. Right. Beat the eggs. Basil won't hurt it. 
beat the eggs up like that. Put a pinch of nutmeg in it. Good pinch of nutmeg, and uh, two pinches is better. A bit like that, all right. And a little bit of salt, about half a teaspoonful, and some more pepper, because I like pepper. Uh, it's good for you, good for your circulation, good for your libido, good for all kinds of wonderful things, right. That's that, goes in there, and goes the cheese. Let's put the whole lot of cheese in there. And there, okay. Little eggs, let's put another one in there. They look small. So don't be afraid to modify recipes as you go along. Another egg in there, you don't have to overbeat it. Right, now stir up the onions and see what's happening to the onions. They're just starting to get flavorful. And see how they're all coming apart? And they've got that little bit of brownness on them and the sweetness coming out of the basil. So we just pour this into the into the pastry shell like that. Take the onions, put them on the top, put them right on the top of the egg, and take that bit that fell off there, and just pat them down a little tiny bit. Now. Want to make it look good? Stick your finger in the egg and just rub it on the edge of the pastry before it has a chance to set, and that will make the pastry look nice and, and golden. This is what your finger's for. Mm -hmm. That's why you've got five of them. And that goes in the oven, and it'll be ready in 20 minutes, but I will be back in two minutes. You're not going to have a 20-minute commercial break, so two minutes. The Urban Peasant will be right back. Back to onions, all right. Now, what we're going to do is make an onion soup. Everybody knows about making French onion soup. It goes on forever. It's not true. Let me show you what you do. You get, we're going to use red onions. You know, that one's got less skin on it. We're going to cut a little bit off there, and then it'll sit flat. Cut a little bit off the side, and then it'll sit flat. Right, now we cut them thin, 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 thin. This is what you do to make a really good onion soup. You need a sharp knife, and you pull it through. You slide it. That's the big trick with it. Turn it round so that you're working on the, the, the holding the fat bit. It's easier to hold. And then you've got lots and lots and lots of onion. Now, there's our pan, hot. We need some fat in it. We need some oil or some butter. It doesn't matter which you use. I like butter because it gives it a nice nutty flavor. So we'll put in some butter to melt and while it melts we'll dump in the onions we'll put in a whole lot of them this will keep the temperature down and stop it burning all this fine cut onion goes in there all right we'll do this other bit here and get some more and what happens sometimes is that people don't do onions because they start to cry so let me show you what you do this is really a great thing to do. You just get yourself a candle, light the candle, and put that right by the chopping board. It gets rid of, it oxidizes the smells, and it's a great thing to do, and it looks romantic. This is all you gotta do is to make this soup, is to cut the onions thin, light yourself a candle, and since we're gonna use red wine in it, you could pour yourself a glass of red wine. If you don't want to use red wine, then you can use apple juice, or you can use some stock, and you can, you know, you can use whatever you want to use in there, but it's nice with red wine. There's a part in France sometimes when they make an onion soup like this, put the thin bits in there. Don't put the thick bit, keep that for later on, because the thin bits is what we want. We want them to sweat. Give them a good stir in the butter, all right, and we can turn the heat down so it doesn't burn the butter, give it a good stir, and what you do is put the lid on, just put the lid on and that lets it sweat, all 
right? Just let them sweat and then they will cook gently. Now, while that's happening, we get the other things ready. We get some tomatoes. See, this is tomato and onion soup, but it's a country soup and it's a real great thing. Some parts of France, when they make onion soups, they don't put the red wine in until later on. They, they start off by they start off with the, the soup, which comes to the table hot. They take a mouthful of it and a mouthful of red wine, and then they add a little s s red wine to the soup bowl, and it keeps getting more and more wine in it, and they keep getting more and more. It's lunch. Fer Chabreuil, it's called, and it's a funny thing to watch happening. Now, okay. Onions are sweating, and I know you can see, but they are sweating. There's juice coming out of them. That's why it's called sweating. That's what you do. That's what little put in the onions, the tomatoes, with the onions, right? Give it a good stir again and start it sweating. This candle business this is why they have candles in restaurants. It's in the old days before they had air conditioning, before they had fans, before they had things, the restaurants used to smell a lot of old food and, the, and it's the candle that gets rid of the, the smells. So. There you are. We can just do that. We want some garlic. The garlic can go in. Depends how much garlic. If it's in the winter, and you think you might feel a cold coming on, you can use three or four. You can use three or four cloves of it. Chop it up. And for the last bit of the chopping, since you're going to need a little bit of salt in there, Sprinkle a little bit of salt on it, and then chop it up, and that'll pick up all the juices and make the ju and make the flavours come out of the garlic quicker into the soup. All right, this is going to take the soup's going to take about ten minutes to cook. But just let it. You don't have to keep messing with it. Just let it happen. We want some time. If you've got fresh thyme, fine. Just, just pull the leaves off with your fingers. That's what you've got fingernails for. All right. And if you haven't got fresh thyme, then you have to go and get a jar. And that's what you do. Now, a lot of people, again, in France, just tie a piece of string around that and put the whole thing in and then take it out. That's being fussy because they don't want to taste the thyme in their teeth. I like the thyme in my teeth. I like these little flavors of things that happen in there. And that's pretty well what we've got to do. No. You have to think about liquid, because it's a soup. You can either put, as I say, you can put stock in. This is some stock that I had in the freezer. Just put some stock in there. And, of course, some red wine. And then you bring it right up to the boil and let it simmer away for about 10 minutes. I'm going to be back in two minutes, and we'll cook something else with red onions. Okay? Don't go away. James will be right back. Now there's my soup. Look, bubbling away, and it's turning into soup. Soup doesn't have to cook forever. This is a great, quick amalgamation of fresh flavors. I'm going to put it over here so we can see what else we're doing. And I found a lid in the dishwasher. I'll put the proper lid on there. And now we're going to make something else with red onions. Red onions is what we do. Now, this is a sort of Thai dish. And this, oh, I've got some green, some red onions sliced in here. This is the cheapest way there is to buy beef. It's flank steak, or some people call it skirt steak. And what you do with it is buy it. It's got, see it's got grain running down there like that. This is where the tough way it is. So we're going to cut it that way later on. But this is very economical because there's no fat on it at all. And what you do is buy a bit. What you don't use, you wrap it up tight in cling film and you put it in the freezer and you take it out. Now, the way to do this is to get it into manageable sized pieces. Get yourself a fry pan. And what we're going to do is get the fry pan really, really hot and sear the outside of it. Now, while that's happening, I think while well, we, the pan's getting hot, I'll get the tart out of the oven. Remember we made a tart? Red onions, 
Very simple. A couple of eggs, beat them up, a little bit of cheese, and even a, just a frozen, frozen pie shell. Now look at right, that. It's much better than a quiche. And it's still, still in the... Here, we'll make it look elegant. Put it on there. That's pretty enough. And we'll put, we'll put a bit of parsley by the side of it there. Instant gourmet. Isn't that great? Now the pan is now hot. You want to see how a pan gets hot? Run the tap and you flick water on it. Now if it's hot enough, those little bowls on there will dance. That's almost hot enough you can see. Watch. See, they're not, that's it. When they start to dance like that, see them dance about? That means it's hot enough. So we put the meat in there, right on the dry pan. It's another great advantage of getting a good non-stick pan because you can heat it up and you can do things and it won't stick. So we just let that get going like that. Now, we need, I'll move this out of the way. Need that later. That's the lid. We don't need that. We need a nice big platter. Let's get ourselves a good big platter. And we will make, get the, the outside leaves of the lettuce and use those for decoration. Just pop them out a little bit. And then that, yeah, that's going to look okay. That'll look just fine. You can smell that beef starting to sear. Let's put another lettuce leaf on there. Right. Now, the rest of the lettuce we're going to cut crosswise in about half inch strips and make a bed of it right there like that we're going to flip this over have a good look quick there it is just browning on the bottom get it like that and the trick is to get it really hot cook it really really quickly okay let's get the rest of the salad ready tomatoes nice fresh tomatoes. Can't do this with canned tomatoes, you need fresh ones. So we'll cut this into cut this into wedges. And away we go. Again, wedges, lots of wedges. And as soon as you can smell the meat, it's going to be ready. We'll get lots of tomatoes because it'll look good. And get a good loaf of bread. This is a great summer lunch or summer supper and you've got onions ready, you've got tomatoes ready, that's a bit of lettuce, we want a little bit of garlic, so we'll get that ready, and we'll squash that with some salt, put the salt on there first and then squash the garlic into it, stops it wobbling about but it also picks up all the flavours, there, just chop it up, get your fingers out of the way, chop it up small, and there it goes. Now, what we've got to do now is make this really, 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 really quickly. We want a lime. We get ready. There, that's ready to go. That's ready to go. And here's some cilantro, which is, or flat leaf parsley you can use, but cilantro is nicer because it's sort of a chili dish. And I'm going to put, to make it taste great, I'm going to put a little bit of hot red pepper in it because I like it that way. Let's have a look under the meat. There it is. Brown on the out. Ah, that's the way it should be. Right. Now, let's get organized because now we have to move. I'll take the meat out. Put it on there. All right. The pan is hot. I'm going to put in a little bit of oil into the hot pan because we're going to make a salad dressing now. And into the hot pan Go the onions, crash, and the tomatoes, the tomatoes, the onions, and the garlic. Don't put the garlic in until everything else is in there, otherwise it'll burn. And give it a good quick toss. All you gotta do is toss it very, very quickly. Put the cayenne pepper on top of it to give it a flavor. And get the lime juice. Wow! On top of it. Well, there we go. Toss it some more. 
really, really quickly. Now while that's happening, watch the beef. Look, we cut it crosswise. There it is, rare in the middle. If you want, don't go on it so rare, you cook it a little bit more. You cut it crosswise, it's very tender, and it's very fresh, and it's really great. You just cut that bit. Beef it makes a little bit of beef go an awful long way. And when you there you go. You finish up with a little bit of sugar, because that is the essence of hot, hot stuff. We toss it some more. And we put the hot dressing on top of the salad. We put beef all over it, bits of rare beef all over it like that. We put cilantro on the top of it to make it look great. And we've got ourselves a really great Thai salad. I'll be back. James will be back in two minutes. Stay tuned. Red onions, all the nice things we made with red onions today. Now, first of all, the soup. It didn't, took us about 20 minutes to make it. Look at all the nice, good stuff in it. And those onions have all gone delicately soft. They've sort of melted together. That's really nice. That and a loaf of bread. You know, you can't want much more than that for a really great supper. But we did other things. We made a red onion tart. Frozen pie shell, because we had it, but if you wanted to make your own pastry, that's fine too. But there it was, we did it, and it looks great. The taste of onion, it's identifiable, all right? And we finished up with this great Thai thing of flank steak beef, which you can do any way at all. Cooks very, very quickly. It's very economical. And it, you know, it's all great, nice, great stuff to play with. I mean, that's what we like to do on this show, is to make things easy. I told you a few minutes ago, but it's worth repeating. If you do cry when you're chopping onions or cutting onions, light a candle, put it on the chopping board, and it will take all the tears away. Isn't that nice? What well, more can I say? I, I think it tastes better if you have a little bit of fun with it. I like to have fun with it, and that's what I'm going to do with this. I'm going to take this down. Mrs. Moscovich has a birthday, and soup, everything will be just great. So, see you next time. Goodbye.